Hey guys, welcome to Film Radar. Throughout the 1980s, movies of all genres, including adventure, fantasy, and horror, were popular. And the era is known for producing seminal teen-oriented films such as The Breakfast Club and Sixteen Candles. But what about the underappreciated coming-of-age films? Those who did not receive their dues at the time. With the 80s nostalgia at an all-time high, now is a great time to revisit these 10 underrated films from the decade. Today, our picks for the top 10 most underrated teen movies. So let's go. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. At number 10, Running on Empty from 1988. To begin with, Running on Empty is not marketed as a teen film. It's a drama with some crime elements. No, it's not The Godfather, but it is about fleeing family. In the film, Judd Hirsch and Christine Lanti play a father and mother, who are both fugitives. They are guilty of anti-war crimes committed in the 1960s, but avoiding the consequences of their actions is becoming increasingly difficult with two children in tow. Now in a new town, the popes are at the mercy of their oldest son, who longs for a normal life. At number 9, Scenes from the Goldmine from 1987. There appears to be an unspoken rule that musicals from the 1980s should be cheerful. That notion is absent from the obscure Diamond in the Rough Scenes from the Goldmine, a 1987 film about the difficulties of becoming a musician. Debbie, a budding singer-songwriter who was invited to join a rising rock band, is played by Catherine Mary Stewart, the last starfighter. She has no idea that becoming romantically involved with the lead will jeopardize her career. At number 8, The Boy Who Could Fly, from 1986. In the 1980s, there weren't many fanciful teen movies. In terms of plot and situations, the majority were quite grounded. The same can be said for The Boy Who Could Fly, a 1986 film about a 14-year-old girl, Millie, who befriends her neighbor, Eric, after a tragic loss. She and Eric work together to find a new way to escape their pain and cope with their respective difficulties. The basic synopsis of The Boy Who Could Fly may sound depressing, but don't be put off by it. This whimsical drama contains more than a glimmer of hope. For Halloween fans, the film was written and directed by Nick Castle, the original Michael Myers actor. At number 7, My Bodyguard, from 1980. My Bodyguard's events are explained by adults turning a blind eye. Inadvertently, Adam Baldwin, Firefly, saves Chris Mackpiece's Clifford, a young, wealthy kid who is being bullied by Matt Dillon's Melvin. Clifford learns of the secret pain behind his new defender's eyes as he befriends him. Latchkey kids were popular around the time of the film's release, so the plot takes advantage of that. The characters in My Bodyguard may not have been enlisting in the armed forces or embarking on far-flung adventures, but there's an undeniable torment in this melancholy drama set at home. At number 6, Teen Witch from 1989. Despite the success of films like The Witches of Eastwick and the presence of ghouls and monsters of all kinds in 1980s cinema, witches were not nearly as popular. As a result, when Teen Witch originally billed as a female Teen Wolf debuted in theaters in 1989, only a small number of people saw it. In fact, it only made $27,843 on a $2 million budget. And this is safe to say that this put a stop to witchy activity in teen movies until The Craft came out in 1996. Teen Witch is about a high school student named Louise, played by Blake Lively's sister Robin, who discovers she is the modern reincarnation of a witch and decides to use her magical abilities. At number 5, Just One of the Guys, from 1985. Readers will notice that the plot in this film is very similar to that of the 2006 hint, She's the Man. You've probably heard of or seen this 1985 comedy, but it's rarely mentioned when talking about retro teen cinema. Terry, a young journalist, poses as a male student at a different high school in Just One of the Guys in order to be taken more seriously as a writer. Terry falls in love with her new best friend while playing two different roles. Just one of the guys may lack finesse of its contemporaries, but it features a highly charismatic performance from its lead, Joyce Heiser, in this fairly lighthearted romp about seeking equality. At number 4, Some Kinda Wonderful, from 1987. In the 1980s, John Hughes was in high demand, but not every one of his films was a smash hit. To be fair, Hughes only wrote the script for Some Kinda Wonderful. He did not direct it. Nonetheless, this story about two teens from the other side of the tracks is as powerful as Pretty in Pink. Not to mention, it stars three underappreciated young actors from the era. At number three, For Keeps, from 1988. 
In her iconic 1980s role, Molly Ringwald was always on the verge of falling in love, but for keeps shows us what happens to the characters after the credits roll. Molly plays Darcy, a teen lovebird who puts her dreams on hold when she and her high school sweetheart, Stan, find out they're expecting. This development brings with it a whole new set of challenges for Darcy and Stan. At number two, Little Darlings from 1980. There appears to be a scarcity of female-led teen films during these days. However, for those who are simply looking for a much needed resurgence, look no further than the vastly underappreciated Little Darlings. This 1980 film, set up at summer camp and about two teen girls betting on who can lose their virginity first, ends up being more heartfelt than anyone could have predicted. At number one, The New Kids from 1985. Sean S. Cunningham was understandably under pressure after his low-budget 1980 slasher Friday the 13th grossed a tidy sum. However, what was supposed to be a horror film turned out to be more dramatic than frightening. That's not to say there aren't thrills in The New Kids, but two-thirds of the film is about escalating bullying rather than maiming. So guys, have you seen any of these films? If you have, let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share with your friends. And finally, thanks for watching.